It is one of the most important, disputed, and controversial pieces of land anywhere on Earth, but is the reason the world's biggest religions and some of the heaviest political tensions that exist happens here because of what's secretly buried beneath this holy city. Well, buckle up, folks. There is an ancient UFO buried beneath the holy city of Jerusalem, and it's possibly emanating a frequency our human brains are receiving, and there could be others, possibly all over the world. Going forward, I have no idea if any of this is true, but in the bigger context of everything else that is happening, it's possible. Renowned psychic Rory Geller says he was asked to remote view the location, and that is what he saw. Now, before you dismiss Uri Geller's uh, P.T. Barnum with spoons, one of my next videos will go in-depth examining possibly what we're all missing. Geller didn't have much to say about what that frequency is or why it is being emanated. But if our brains are receiving it, why? And Geller isn't the first one to mention ancient UFOs in the ground. Did you knowingly lie when you said that you actually saw a 30-odd foot gravity-powered flying disc? Yeah. Famed scientist and Area 51 whistleblower Bob Lazar came to the world's attention over 30 years ago with reporting from George Knapp. Lazar claimed that while he was working at the top-secret military base S-4 inside Area 51, he was involved in trying to reverse engineer UFOs. Lazar claimed that while he was working there, he was aware of multiple types of UFOs on site that were being researched, including one, according to Lazar, he was told, came from an archaeological dig. It was allegedly ancient. Now from where or when it came was never disclosed. But think about the implications, if true, that there could be more of them out there, many more. It also reinforces a growing topic of unavoidable discussion. Could some of the big answers to what is flying around in our skies today be found hidden in the dirt or the ocean and not the stars? It would seem so. What else could be buried out there? Well, this is where Blink-182's Tom DeLonge takes the stage. Apart from Geller and Lazar, are claims by Tom DeLonge, Blink-182 singer and one of the key founders of To The Stars Academy. TTSA is a leading enterprise with some of the biggest names involved in helping the modern disclosure movement. Tom DeLonge says there could be a giant pyramid underground in Alaska, and just like Geller, he says it could be sending signals as well. He suggests it might be emanating a frequency that might even be disrupting human consciousness. When I asked Uri Geller about what DeLong had said, a point of divergence emerged. Geller says DeLong could be right, but he didn't feel it was possibly interfering in a negative way, but he wasn't entirely sure. Geller also points out even if the Alaskan Pyramid isn't there, there are plenty of other major energy hotspots all around the world that might also have things buried beneath that we don't know about yet. And he gave a few examples. Rui Geller said it was possible there is another ancient object or structure buried beneath Easter Island. Considering the giant heads that covered the island are actually full statues buried up to the neck, it shows how even obvious things can float under the radar unnoticed for centuries. He says other sacred places like the largest pyramid in the world, Cholula, Mexico, or Teotihuacan, or Angkor Wat in Cambodia, he says many of these sacred places to humans might have more beneath them than what we realize, and where these places are located could be for a very good reason. The famed psychic says the Great Pyramids and the Sphinx sits atop a major energy hotspot. Uri Geller adds there is possibly something significant that has yet to be unearthed hidden beneath the Giza Plateau similar to what may be in Jerusalem, and he feels the site is much, much older than we realize and the construction that was not done by the Egyptians may have involved help from outsiders, aka not people. When asked if the largest pyramid was used to create free energy similar to Nikola Tesla's tower design on Long Island for free energy, well, Geller said it was certainly possible. He said we don't really understand what the structures are about. But finding the truth is something we should all get charged up about. And here's why. 
This is an oversimplification of the theory, but the made pyramid, where no mummies or hieroglyphs were ever found, sits atop a water table. Now, pressure created from water channeled up through the two main granite shafts of the pyramid, one of which has rose granite inside, means that the quartz in the granite undergoes a piezoelectric reaction. That creates an instant electrical charge created simply by putting the quartz granite under intense pressure from the water. When those charged particles in the water from the two types of granite then meet at the top in the main chamber, a potential hydrogen reaction can occur. Now, this happens while the energy resonates at a particular frequency based upon the interior design of the pyramid. That energy from the reaction is then channeled up through the pyramid's gold cap. Gold is one of the best conductors of electricity. Now, the gold cap can then help distribute the energy through the atmosphere, just like Tesla's tower design on Long Island that had rods drilled into the water table. Now, it had the same functional purpose, and it worked which was the big, big problem. J.P. Morgan, one of his financers, also owned General Electric and the national infrastructure that supported it, and he knew free energy was a price his monopolies could not afford to pay. But we'll get to that in another video. Back to Egypt. So why create free power? There were no cell phones in Egypt. Well, this is where the thought experiments really get interesting. Around the world at some of the most ancient megalithic sites on Earth, many shows evidence of high-speed precision tooling, drilling, and cut marks in the rock, including some of the hardest rocks on Earth, many of which can only be duplicated with today's electrical equipment, specialized drills, and even lasers. Ancient metallurgy techniques didn't produce drill bits and tools hard enough to counter the friction, wear, and resistance from trying to mold the hardest rocks on Earth. So how was it done back then? How were these ancient tools powered if so? Could this be why many ancient cultures also have legends of moving very heavy objects with unknown energy forces? Could this be part of the puzzle? Attacking Graham Hancock for his Netflix series is easy to do from armchair academics and the media herd that just needs to fill airtime. But if they were truly noble in their intent, they would look for answers for things like the Lomas Rishi Caves in India. Now, the kind of laser-like, mathematically precise stonework to produce the interior of these caves is a confounding mystery, especially because the knowledge of geometry necessary to create a perfect curve with the center point of that circle from the arched roof sits below the floor. After laser measurements, the room was beyond perfection, and it's thousands of years old. And it's just one of many examples of mystifying ancient masonry, which again speaks to the possibility of lost items, knowledge, and history, much of it buried underground. It shows that something was here, some kind of civilization before us, and they were able to perform feats that we don't understand how they were able to accomplish. Uri Geller is very clear in his belief in aliens and also entities across the electromagnetic spectrum that most of us cannot perceive. It's not a secret. The sixth man to walk on the moon, Dr. Edgar Mitchell, was very open in his belief in UFOs and ETIs, extraterrestrial intelligence, while also having tremendous ESP powers of his own. Now, beliefs that pushed him deeper into CIA testing of folks like Geller and his contemporary, the late Ingo Swan, rather than having it destroy his career. And much of it happened at Stanford University. And that's where Professor Gary Nolan works. And he recently had this to say. You know, if you're a million year old civilization, you've already been around longer than we've been civilized. And maybe your timeline is a little different. And maybe you realize, maybe you realize that you can't just show up and change everything. I mean, what has happened in human history when one more advanced civilization shows up over another. Now, advanced doesn't mean smarter. Advanced just means more technologically capable. How we might be able to communicate with UAP or if attempts have been made. Oh, yes, many attempts have been made, yeah. <laughs> and and there, I, I can't talk about it, but there has been evidence of them replying. With that in mind, it makes comments from Geller, DeLong, and others far more interesting, especially given the overlap. Don't forget, Green and Putoff both have long histories of using the California campus as cover when they worked with people like Geller after he arrived from Israel. 
It's the big secret in the room they all seem to know that we're all playing catch up to. But the good news is we might be able to watch all of this unfold on TV. The popular TV show The Secrets of Skinwalker Ranch, a property that sits next to Area 51, is focused now curiously on trying to unearth a large object buried in the ground of the ranch. Now the show is suggesting it might also be emanating a frequency of some kind, or at least is reactionary when humans and electronics are nearby. Real or not, these kinds of narratives and themes of buried, ancient, potentially alien technology will likely be an important keystone in putting the modern UAP issue into context going forward. Now, all of this comes with word that 2023 might finally result in the arrival of whistleblowers who could speak to the credibility of secret government reverse engineering programs, and as George Knapp and Jeremy Corbell are suggesting, where the bodies are buried, right down to the buildings, they say. It comes after whistleblower protection has been signed by President Biden that should give cover for people to come forward and testify in 2023. Lawmakers are already hearing stories behind closed doors, so the issue is now, how long before we do? I'm Sean. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy the content, be sure to give it a like and don't forget to subscribe. I have great new material coming all the time. There are some helpful links in the description. And as always, I'd love to hear what you have to say. Don't forget to leave your comments. Stay tuned. There's another great video coming up next.